What's up, fellow anglers? Hope everybody's doing all right. We're doing a bit of rigging today on this beautiful uh, afternoon day. It's still a bit chilly. Might hit the water later. Today we're going to be installing a Yak Attack, their heavy-duty lever lock anchor trolley system. Uh, this is going to get installed on my uh, Old Town Sportsman PDL 120. Now you can see everything that comes with the uh, kit right here. Of course, we've got the backing plates, which is something I find extremely important for when I'm doing my kayak uh, rigging. A trolley, some guides. This is the lever lock system itself, which if you haven't seen, this is basically just this plastic section right here that'll basically just pinch down the line as needed. This, of course, is installed this way on the side of your kayak. Of course, two more guides and our um, other pulley on the other side. And this is the actual part where you connect your anchor uh, or slide that through if you have a quick release, which I need to figure out here in the future. Or if you're using a pole, you can just run this through the through this hoop and into the bottom of the water as well. Um, really, from the installation, all you need um, is a Phillips head screwdriver, 1364th drill bit, and I have a, a, a lighter for when I'm working with paracord just to make sure my ends are nice and clean. Now I also have a little bit of tape and in Kansas one of the things we always have in abundance is baling wire. which is what I got a, a wad of here. And the reason being is that, as you can see in this shot here, this here is in the middle of the kayak, this entry point, and there's no other entry points in the back. So I'm going to see if I can fish this through using a bit of baling wire to get this back plate in place. We'll see. Let's get to work on this. So you see the back of the kayak here. Um, I'm going to be putting my pulley probably pretty close to where this logo is back here. I'll play with that a little bit. I'm going to have it right above the line here on these kayaks. And it's slightly concave on the Sportsman PDLs, uh, but I think it'll work out rather well. Now, as you can see, as I pointed out earlier, this is my only access to this entire back area here. I know a lot of people end up putting a hatch right here. Um, there's even a spot kind of pre-drilled in the middle there so you kind of know where to, to drill it out. But I'm going to try to do this without um, adding another hatch here in the back as I want to minimize the number of hatches I have into the middle. I'm thinking I'm going to get this first pulley Back here, just on the other side of this logo here, I don't want to put anything on top of the logo. And what I'm going to do here, work. So I'm going to drill these holes and here's my idea is I've got this backing plate. Now the backing plate has two holes for the pulley, separate holes for the clamp base. I'm sure you've probably seen this before. So I'm going to run a, a feeding wire or feed a wire through um, likely this middle hole here. And I've already popped out the lock nut on this one. So I'm running my wire through and I'm going to kind of arrange it in here so I can twist this uh, in the actual um, kayak by using the wire and pull it through and then get the first screw started pop the wire out of the way um, after I have that somewhat snug and then go ahead and get the second screw in there at least that's the theory we'll see how it turns out <laughs> let's go ahead and get these holes done and we can go from there I am starting with the hardest one first, and then we'll go from there with the other ones. There we go, hole's done. It's always the most nerve-wracking part of that. Now I am going to slide the screw in just so I can make sure these are aligned exactly how I want them. I'm kind of a stickler for things being lined up. There we go, that started. There we go. Holes are done. So I'm going to pull this back out. The screw and the pulley. 
And what I'm going to do is make sure I have this stuff ready to go. So I'm actually going to put my screws down here on my light, as well as the pulley and my screwdriver. Now yeah, we're going to go after that middle hole. So I'm going to feed my wire through here. Probably not absolutely necessary, but make sure I have it all in order. And again, I've got a little bit of a stop that I've bent on here just to make sure I don't lose anything. So I'm good at that. Then we're going to go ahead and feed this through. And try to get it somewhat in that forward direction. And if all goes well, and it does, and grab that wire right here. So I'm just going to bend this so it kind of holds in place for a second. All right, so that's the easy part. Now the hard part, we're gonna to try to arrange this. And I might tape it on there a little bit as well uh, in a way that can easily come off. And then see if I can fish it through, get that wire started. So give me a bit, I'm gonna see if I can get this ready to go. It's always a little bit tricky as you want to get it on here enough to be able to work it. Um, but you're also going to want to be able to push it back out and undo the temporary tape and the wire. But hope you can see that all right. But really, it's just the wire coming up and over into that hole and some tape over the top of it to hold the wire or hold the backing plate into place. Now let's see if my theory holds up. Perfect. So I gotta lie, that was the second attempt. The first attempt, it, it did fall off on the inside, but doing that on the second attempt, taking my time, getting that first one locked. And instead of sucking it down, you're gonna try this. Uh, once I got that first screw, once I knew it was into the locking nut, I went ahead and took the wire out and I used that to, the, the first screw, since it was in the locking nut, I used the screwdriver to rotate the backing plate till the other screw was in place, got it started, and then it was good to go. So that's the hard one. All done with a simple bit of baling wire and some electrical tape. So we move to the front of the kayak and let's get that one installed. Now the installation on this side should go a lot easier as we have the hatch right here. Now we can easily get in and reach any backing plates that we need, which is nice. Let's go and repeat this in the front. I want to put it. I want to keep my. I think it's called the chine. This line here on the kayak. I know there's some people like to drop theirs below. I think I'm going to keep mine above for the time being, mostly because I want to keep holes as high up and away from the water line as possible. Um, I will probably come back and put some silicone on the back of these later on. Can't find it right now, but um, so I'm going to keep it up and above here. I'm just trying to decide. I'm about a foot back next to this handle. I'm gonna put it right there. Seems like a great spot to me. Just gonna mark that. And go ahead and put our drill through. So just like before, I'm gonna use the screw to hold the first, or hold the uh, pulley in place so I can get it where I want it. I like to take it off to drill the hole, the full hole, so I don't want to damage the pulley at all. I know some people just drill all the way through. 
I'm a bit paranoid on items like that. Go ahead and pop both of these screws through. There we go. The second pulley installed. And those are secure too. A pulley moves really well. I love having a backing plate, it's just my preference. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is actually run the trolley line and we're going to hook it up in the bracket here first. So I've got my line here to make sure I'm not going to make it get tangled. Probably will anyway. So I'm going to feed it up one way or through one side of the anchor lock system. And I'm just going to put a little overhand knot in it so that that stays secure. I mean, yeah, that'll be good for now. So now we need to find the other end of the cord, which obviously since I dropped it is in a tangled mess. So give me just a minute to work through that. So this is paracord. I have heard some people if you wanted to, you could switch out the paracord. But being that all the accents on this kayak are already uh, black and orange anyways, it kind of matches the, the color and the feel. So all right, I've got this all untangled. Uh, I'll be slightly off camera, but I'm going to take it up through the bottom of the front pulley because we want our class to end up being on the bottom of the main system here so we go up to the bottom of the front pulley try not to let this get tangled up again let me pull this line down so it's out of the way i'm just gonna set up my cup holder on the trailer there rear of the kayak I'm going to feed that down to the bottom or from the top to the bottom come back to the middle and I've got tons of extra cord but the instruction said here is that you want to tie this back on here but you don't necessarily want to make it overly tight as when you add the Loctite system as well as the guides, which those all still need to go on, that will cause the line to tighten up. And I do know I'm going to want this to be down. My goal is to have it be right around here for my setup. So for now, I'm just going to put another quick overhand knot in this. I'm going to leave the excess on. Um, I always get nervous about cutting things like this too early and then needing some extra cord. I don't think I'm going to need this much, but still doesn't hurt. And then we'll just use the spare for other projects. There we go. So it's got a lot of slack in it right now. I'm not worried about it being too overly tight at this particular moment. It allows me, as I'm putting on the next pieces, to kind of line up where it will be. There we go. I think that's going to look good right along there. I'm not too worried. I don't use this handle often, so I'm not too worried about it crossing there either. Come on, untie this real quick and I'll show you something real quick that I just noticed. So real quick here, um, something that I didn't notice just to show you. So on this piece here, um, it's a regular round bits here, but if you flip it over, it has some slots going out the side. So this is actually the back of this piece, and this is the front. I put this on there backwards, not paying attention. So you want your knot to be on this side, and that way the paracord can kind of go along this little channel on the back. So I'm going to correct that real quick on mine. So it should look like this. And you can see here how that channel is made for that paracord to go out the side. So I'm going to go and retie this other side. So now that the pulleys are on, we can kind of see where the line is uh, without the guides. You need to figure out where the actual line lock system is going to go at. Now, 
my seat, my seat right now is in the normal position that I sit in, which I think is important to take into account while you're figuring this out. So obviously my arm is about here. So I don't really want to go negative of where my shoulder and my arm would be. It's really going to be from here forward. I'm kind of liking this spot here. It's kind of squared out. If I kind of place this here just to take a look. I mean, I don't want to make it necessarily proud like that. I'd like to have it down, kind of flush with the kayak. But to put it there. And then another option is to move it forward and put it here. Could have put it in here, but the cup holder is going to make it difficult to get that backing plate in. So I'm trying to make it as easy on myself as possible as well. Now, the, the Sportsman PDL 120 here does have a kind of a curve. It really curves right about in here. But for this portion here, it's pretty good and flat. And I think that's where I want to kind of nail in my sweet spot. Also, it's nice with this line in here. I can kind of see the line and how it looks on the kayak. And I think, I think that's where I'm going to land. It's going to be a little tricky to reach this. There's a, a foam pad that's support material here on the kayak. But there is a kind of a hole through here. And then there's this here. So... I'm thinking I might just start with the one on the left and go from there. So let me just mark this first one. We'll drill this hole and then I'll um, get the other one leveled out. There we go. And yeah, I do already have the line in here just so I know kind of where it lands. And also, just so I don't have to mess with it later, which be good. Alright, let's make sure this is straight to the kayak. That looks good to me. Looks good. Feed this other screw on this side. These are both in and ready to go. Now, again, you've seen this many times right here. Hope you can see that okay. Yeah, let me get that reflection going there. You see, that's the pulley side. This is the clamp side. So, we're going to use these two holes this time, not this one. So, I'm going to start trying to get this hole on. With this screw on here and then I can use that screw to rotate the other side into place once I get it to the nylon portion of the locking nut is the idea. You know I think I'm going to wire pull this one through too. And it is being very difficult. So I've got the backing plate on here and it's in the nylon, kind of like what we did in the back. So I'm just going to use it to capture the other side, hopefully. Yeah, there we go. So I've got it on that side. All goes well, I should be able to take this out. Rotate this around. Yeah. It's on there. The only thing is I don't have the line all the way through here. So I'm going to loosen up this side just a little bit. I think I'm just going to feed the line back around through. I'd much rather do that and not lose the locking plate than try to finagle it in there and drop it out. So 
And that is in there. Backing plate installed. A little tricky. I like it. So let me undo this knot and rerun the line through everything real quick. Uh, let's have a little bit of trouble, so use some of my wire. Get that through. Probably use a screwdriver or something. It is nice to have those little holes there just to make feeding that through. Heck of a lot easier. Awesome. So that's in place. And again, this is a lever lock, so if I lock that down, it's not going anywhere. Doesn't take a lot. I'll unlock that. All right, so now we just need to do our guides. That I need a one eight inch bit. So one thing to notice if you're using the HD kit, the holes for the pulleys and for the locking system uses a 13 64th bit. The guides, these don't have backing plates, they screw into the kayak itself. Those will use a one eight inch bit. So I'm gonna go get those and a tape measure as I want to space these out as best I can. So what I'm going to do here, I'm trying to figure out my spacing. I'm going to go ahead and put this into place. I'm going to pull this a bit taut. Now I'm not going to tie a knot in it, so if I can pull out any more slack, I can. I can. But what I'm trying to figure out is where do I want the spacing? And do I need all four or not? Right now I'm thinking I'm just gonna use three of the four guides um, and install those. So by having this a bit taut, I can kind of put it where I think it's kind of gonna go. So I'm gonna put one, pull it down a bit to here, but I can play with it a little bit. One there, and then I'm gonna play with the spacing in the front as well. This will give me a visual of where these would go. So I am gonna adjust each one of these individually because I do want to bring this down, I believe. Well, I can probably bring it up a little bit here. I'm thinking there's the sweet spot. Not there. So again, do keep in mind, these ones take a 1 8 inch bit, which is um, definitely smaller. That's to allow for these screws, which you can see have a coarser thread to bite into the kayak itself. So that's what we'll be installing. I only wish the tops were black. Um, I'll probably come in with the marker and make them black till they match everything else. Yeah, that's just kind of how I am. So, double check the position of that guide again. Go here. Um, that was a little high. I'm actually going to bring it, kind of watching this line here is what I want to do. I'm going to actually put it right there instead. And stop messing with it. So otherwise, I'll sit here and adjust this forever. Once there's a hole in there, ain't much I can do about it now. system just fine. Looks good. All right, let's shift and do the ones on the front. All right, so we're just going to rinse, repeat up front. Don't mind the camera arm here. I do already kind of have these marked where I want them at, which is about 23 inches apart. Sorry about the train, y'all. 
I live in a train town in Kansas. So we get used to them pretty fast, but it can take a minute if you're not used to them. So I'm gonna start up here on the front one. Is this one's gonna kind of have to pull down a little bit to get this in line but again I'm as before I'm watching this top line of my kayak and trying to see how the line of this how this line the actual paracord lines up with it and trying to get it to match pretty well All right, let's flip it around and take a look at the whole system. All right, my friends, that's the install of the Yak Attack HD anchor trolley. This is my first anchor trolley, so if you have any tips or tricks or anything you wanted to point out about using one, uh, feel free to drop it down in the comments down below. I always like seeing all your comments and questions, uh, being able to answer those or just having a conversation is always great. Uh, but as a quick walkthrough of this, uh, this is in here now. Again, I've got some extra just in case I need to loosen this, but I have a feeling I'll need to tighten it in the future, not loosen it. But again, you're going to lift this up and it slides right down. And this is what your, your anchor is going to be attached to. This paracord hasn't been stretched, so it still has a lot of stretch to it. So again, that's why I'm thinking I'm going to have to tighten it. But up here in the kayak, when I'm sitting in here, I'll just be taking this and sliding it forward. If I want to move that anchor to a forward position, I will slop over that guy just in case you're curious. That and what I was like thinking about is like the kayak's gonna be or the anchor's gonna be pulling this cord out, so it's not like it's gonna get caught on there at all. So I can take that all the way to the front of the kayak and that'll point me towards the wind or the current, or I can pull it all the way back to the rear of the kayak. And that'll point me the opposite direction. And of course, everything in between is the range. I do have this on the right side of my kayak. The left side of the kayak is where I fish primarily off of. So I didn't want to put it on that side because I don't want to have any tangles or anything else like that. Also on the Old Town um, Sportsman models, the left side is where the taco clip is for your paddle, your paddle holder. So that would be in the way anyway. So to be able to get this nice and high where I won't have to dig around to find it, I can know it's right here by the handle. It's going to go on the right hand side so I can start anchoring out on these windy spring days. Well, that's all I got for you today, my friends. Hope everybody's doing well and staying safe. Things are looking better, and I'm hoping that we'll be back to normal life by the end of 2021. Crossing my fingers. Take care of yourself. Wash your hands as always. And of course, be kind to each other. Take care, my friends.